Hello everyone, welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. Today I am going to talk about a DMAC case study. I have been making lean case studies for past few days and some of my viewers have requested me to create a DMAC case study. So this case study is talking about transshipment turnaround time delay. In order to understand this case study, we need to understand what is a transshipment TAT. A transshipment occurs when the customer sends their unit into the company for servicing and the original receiving location cannot perform the service because the receiving service hub does not have the local capability to repair and or to calibrate the equipment. That can happen within the originating region or it can happen worldwide. It has to be sent outside the country as well. So this transshipment TAT of the organization was huge. They used to take 10 days and companies promise to the end customer was that they will deliver the overall product within 12 days after repair or calibration. So high transshipment TAT was a problem and team decided to do this as a project. The first thing that the team did was to create the project charter. The project charter has six elements. Number one is business case, number two is problem statement, number three is goal statement, number four is scope of the project, number five is the milestones, and number six is team charter. So when they looked at the data for last six months, they observed that the average turnaround time for transshipment is 10 days. So they took the goal to reduce this transshipment TAT from 10 days to 3 days by June 2023. The scope of the project includes transshipment products only. The rest of the other department and the products were out of the scope. The team started this project on 14th of March 2023 and they finished it by 30th of June 2023. The team charter that there was a cross-functional team that was involved because different regions, different logistics teams and other areas were involved. The team charter comprised of global cross-functional team. Friends, you can buy my authored books on Amazon. My first book is 8 Steps to Problem Solving, which talks about Six Sigma concepts. And my second book is Continuous Improvement the Lean Way, which talks about the lean concepts. To understand the high-level process, team created SIPOC. So SIPOC stands for supplier, input, process, output and customer. So who all were the supplier who supply the either the raw material or the information for this process. So customer was one of them, customer contact team was one of them. Delivery and logistics were also the supplier for this particular process. Input was the servicing unit, the fault details and the last calibration certificate that the company has provided along with the equipment process was that they receive the call and they log the call and then the unit is arriving they send it for transshipment then they deliver the services and the unit is returned and the order is closed what is the output the service instrument and the paperwork is the output and who is the customer the end customer is the customer of this particular process the next thing the team did was to identify the potential access to high turnaround time so they wanted to understand what are the reasons why there is high turnaround time so did a brainstorming session so under people they identified that lack of product knowledge or not able to find fault in less time was the problem under process they had lengthy logistics process they had manual process they had custom clearance process had a huge delays under machine, they had internal capabilities not available, invoice generation was manual, and logistics company was delaying. That was under machine. SMEs, there were no subject matter experts. They were not available on the floor. No internal skill development was happening. And the SME or the team leaders are not available on the floor. Under mother nature, there was time zone difference because of which a day or two was the product was delayed. So after identifying all the potential causes, they created the data collection plan. After the data was collected, team performed some analytics. I will use Minitab to explain all of that. So let's go to Minitab and understand how the data was analyzed. 
So friends, I have some data in mini tab. In column C1, I have transshipment tab. And in column C2, C3 and C4, I have access. Even transshipment TAT is my project Y and country inspection TAT and logistics company. So these are the axes which I am going to test on project Y. First, because my project Y is continuous in nature, I will check whether it is normal or non-normal. I will go to stat, basic statistics, graphical summary. Put transshipment TAT here and click OK. So p-value of greater than 0.05 indicate that my y is normally distributed. So when your y is normally distributed and your x which is country is discrete, you will use one way ANOVA test. For that we will go to stat, ANOVA and one way. In response we will enter transshipment tat and in factors we will enter country and we will click OK. If you look at the p-value which is less than 0.05 in this case which indicates that this x is a significant x. You can see when the product is sent outside the country it takes 12 days and when it is sent within the country it takes 7.2 days. So sending it internally or externally makes a difference. The second x is inspection tat which is again a continuous x so when your y is continuous and your x is also continuous you use simple linear regression test for that we will go to stat regression and fitted line plot in response we will enter transshipment tat and in predictor we will enter inspection tat and we will click ok if you look at this R square adjusted value which is greater than 65% which means that inspection TAT is impacting the transshipment TAT and if you look at this graph when the inspection TAT is increasing the transshipment TAT is also increasing. So in order to control the transshipment TAT we need to reduce the inspection TAT. So that is also a significant X. The last X which I am testing here is logistics company. So this X is again a discrete X. So I will use one way ANOVA test for this. I will go to stat, ANOVA and one way. Here in response we will have transshipment TAT and in the factor we will have logistics company and we will click OK. Now if you look at this P value this p-value is greater than 0.05 which indicates that logistics company is not a significant contributor. Now if you go to the data here, all these logistics companies are taking transshipment at as 10.8, 10.3 and 10.6 which is mathematically maybe different but statistically they are the same. So hence it is not a significant factor. After the Significant axes are identified from the potential axis. Team did YY analysis to identify the solutions. The first one was outside shipments. They were delayed. Why? Because the custom clearance takes time. Why? Because custom clearance documentation takes time. And why was that? Because no standard documentation process was available. So what this team did was they created a standard process and a checklist of documents that were required and they prepared these documents beforehand before they started shipping the product. The second significant X was high inspection turnaround time. Why this was a problem? There were two reasons. The number one reason was that the product was not picked up from the rack for two days. When it arrived, the product arrived, the product was there on the rack for two days. It was not even moved or inspected. And the next thing why they was doing that because there was no internal process metrics to track turnaround time internally. And then they created a step by step process metric and they created a dashboard for that. The second point why the high inspection TAT was there because the engineers were not able to find out faults very quickly because of the lack of knowledge that they had. And why it happened because a new product introductions were not taught effectively to the team.
and then what the solution was that they need to create a robust training and knowledge enhancement plan for the engineers so that they could find out the faults easily and send the products for repair or calibration with the help of these solutions and many more which i'm not showing in this case study team was able to reduce this turnaround time from 10 days to 3 days and then they had a good customer satisfaction service score on a scale of 10 they got 9.8 after improving this particular process so friends i hope you understood how to resolve this kind of problem in a manufacturing environment so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends i'll see you in my next upcoming video till then take care bye bye friends you can buy my authored books on amazon my first book is eight steps to problem solving which talks about six sigma concepts and my second book is continuous improvement the lean way which talks about the lean concepts.